Hey guys uh, and gals, thanks for joining me uh, at noon. I know you're probably hungry and want lunch, so I appreciate you guys spending time with me. Uh, my name is Matt Zeller. I'm a PM on our Windows Mixed Reality team, and specifically, uh, the team I work on is responsible for developer enablement. So uh, we work with developers and try to give you the resources and tools that you need to be successful, whether it's um, documentation or tutorials um, or toolkits that have uh, resources that you can leverage in your applications, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, what I'm here to talk to you about today, um, hopefully you guys are in the right place, is to talk a little bit about um, Microsoft's approach to mixed reality. Um, I don't know if you guys, if, were any of you, um, did any of you sit in on my talk on Wednesday? A couple of you. Okay, so for a few of you, that's going to be a, a brief refresher at the beginning on, on our approach to mixed reality. We just like to lay that foundation each time before we talk about the devices themselves and where they fit on our spectrum. Um, then we'll talk about HoloLens itself, the hardware, what makes it unique. Um, and then talk about building applications for Windows Mixed Reality, which is inclusive of HoloLens. And so most of our, uh, most of our content today will be focused um, on building for HoloLens. Um, so let's talk about Mixed Reality. I get a lot of questions, uh, we get a lot of questions about um, our approach to calling this Mixed Reality, to calling our platform Windows Mixed Reality. And we get asked, why are we not referring to our devices as AR or VR? Quite frankly, if you were to talk to me about our devices as AR and VR, I wouldn't shoot you down, I wouldn't correct you. Um, but we talk about them in the way that we do as mixed reality devices because I think like so many, we anticipate a convergence and we think that as we think about um, devices that exist along a spectrum today, those, uh, those will become less and less differentiated and become more inclusive of an entire spectrum over time. So we're just trying to sort of get ahead of the curve there, not just in branding, but in terms of how we think about our development platform and tools um, and our devices that sit along that spectrum. So quite simply, mixed reality, if I'm defining it for you today, um, is any blending of physical reality and digital reality. So we have the world that we exist in today, right? People, places, and things that are made of atoms. These are physical things. We know that well. We're sitting in it right now. And then we have a digital reality that's made of ones and zeros, where your people, places, and things are entirely virtual. So imagine if you could uh, somehow kind of suck your consciousness out of your, uh, out of your body and place it into a Tron-esque world. That might be 100% virtual, right? Any blending of the two is mixed reality. Think about it as a slider. Any, anywhere on that spectrum, it could be just a little bit of physical in your digital, um, or a little bit of uh, physical, sorry, a little bit of, uh, <laughs> I'm confusing myself as I say it. A little bit of digital in your physical or a little bit of physical, um, that, what a tongue twister, a little bit of digital in your physical, a little bit of physical in your digital. Um, anywhere on that slider is mixed reality. So let's look at the spectrum then. If, if there's a slider, let's take a look at the spectrum. So on one end is the physical reality that I was talking about, right? People, places, and things made of atoms, physical reality. On the other end of the spectrum, digital reality if you could truly just take your consciousness out and put it in this digital landscape. As soon as you add some digital people, places, and things to physical reality, we consider that the start of mixed reality. Similarly, on the other end of the spectrum, as soon as you add some physical people, places, and things to the digital reality, you're on the mixed reality spectrum. Everything in between, mixed reality. Now we think AR today, traditional AR, is on one end of the spectrum, right? And traditional VR, as we understand it today, is on the other end of the spectrum. And that's great. We have devices that exist on both ends of the spectrum. However, we at Microsoft want to make sure that the spectrum is as inclusive as possible. And so we've created two device types and one platform that unifies them to, um, to make it easier for developers to jump on board with our devices. So on one end of the spectrum, for us, you have holographic devices, stuff like HoloLens that we'll talk about in depth today. And it covers a wider range because you can bring a ton of digital content into your physical world if you want to, or you can do something that's more like just traditional AR and have um, insights, digital insights and notifications pop up. But if you're just doing that, you're not really leveraging all the strength of HoloLens. On the other end of the spectrum, we have headsets that we announced with some of our partners late last year um, that are coming, the dev kits are coming this summer, and we'll have them on retail shelves this holiday season for consumers. And these are our immersive headsets. These are VR-like devices that immerse you into a virtual world. They still have physical understanding, though, because they can track where you are relative to your environment 
using the same inside-out tracking that HoloLens uses. So we'll talk about how HoloLens does, um, how HoloLens understands where you are relative to your environment. These immersive headsets are able to do that as well with the same inside-out tracking that comes from HoloLens. They also include uh, motion controllers, which are going to give you six degrees of freedom movement with the motion controllers and an understanding of where your hands are relative to the device. And another cool thing is those are just leveraging the same inside-out tracking that's already built into the headsets as well. So these headsets, these immersive headsets, aren't going to require any external markers. You don't have to change anything about your environment. You don't have to put up any lighthouse markers or external cameras. It's all done with the device itself. And so you're able to bring a physical understanding of where you are, where your hands are, where you're looking. Um, every step that you take in the real world in one of these immersive headsets or on HoloLens is a step in the digital world, right? A meter is a meter. And so instead of thinking about these as two separate uh, device types, whoops, Mixed. sorry about that. Instead of thinking about these as two separate device types that require two separate platforms, two sets of tools, two sets of APIs, um, we want our developers to be able to invest in one platform that's inclusive of both of these device types as they sit on the spectrum today, and then over time as these device types converge. And I think we all predict this, right? Like, there's no reason that AR devices and VR devices have to be um, isolated individual devices for very long. We're hoping that we'll be ahead of the curve and our developers will be ahead of the curve in terms of targeting experiences that will run um, in each of those ends of the spectrum. So I'm going to play a quick video for you right now that'll hopefully help you understand how we see mixed reality and the, the blending of physical people, places, and things and digital people, places, and things. Mixed reality breaks down the barriers between physical and virtual realities. Let's see how we can alter realities across people, places, and objects. Here we have a real office populated with real things. Let's now adjust reality by adding virtual objects to this physical space. Notice how these objects are aware of the real surfaces in the office. Next, let's replace the real person with an avatar. This allows her to be present even though she is not physically in the room. Now let's adjust the environment itself and make it virtual. Notice how the virtual objects and avatar continue to persist. Finally, let's tie back this entire virtual scene to the original physical room. A subtle boundary grid can reveal real obstacles, making it safer to walk around this virtual environment. Mixed reality unlocks exciting new experiences that merge the physical and the virtual worlds. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how the user experience can be the same regardless of whether you're dealing with physical surfaces or digital surfaces. And you can sort of see how digital people, places, and things, or holograms, can be consistently utilized in the world, whether you're in a physical environment or a virtual environment. So why are we so excited about Windows Mixed Reality and our investments in one platform that can cover both device types? Well, as I mentioned, um, you know, a lot of people talk about developing for these um, devices in an or way, right? It's one or the other. So as a business or a developer, I've invested in um, AR experiences or VR experiences. Or if you're lucky and talented enough to do both, you're having a conversation probably of or in terms of platforms and tools, right? I'm developing for this piece of hardware that has this uh, SDK and this set of APIs, and then on the other end of the spectrum, I'm developing for the other hardware types with its own uh, tools, its own SDK. Um, its own APIs. And so we're excited about the AND proposition, and we hope that you are too. Um, we're developing a platform and have developed a platform that gives you one set of tools, one set of APIs, and allows you to leverage um, both device types. So we're excited about AND. And I won't spend a lot of time on this slide, but I think we all understand um, why this is such an exciting proposition, because headset growth um, is projected to be huge, right? I think we all are here because we understand that there's tremendous business opportunity um, in headsets, uh, both AR and VR, um, and mixed reality inclusive of everything in between. So before I dive deep on HoloLens, I just want to recap a little bit of the immersive headsets since it's probably um, fresh news for some of you. It's, it's a more recent announcement than um, what we've been doing with HoloLens. So these immersive headsets um, are going to be unique for a few reasons. Uh, the first is that they're really easy to set up and they work right out of the box. Again, you don't have to set up any external markers 
for your uh, motion controllers or the headset. You don't have to have any external cameras, no lighthouse sensors. Um, it uses inside out tracking to understand where you are relative to the world. And that gives you six degrees of freedom in the headset and in the motion controllers. Um, it also means that you can take it wherever you want to go. You have more freedom in the places that you can use it um, and the ways that you want to use it. Um, our partners, you can see uh, we've got uh, six OEM partners lined up that are releasing, that have committed to uh, release immersive headsets. And Acer, in fact, announced that um, their, uh, well, Acer and HP's uh, development edition immersive headsets are available today for pre-order. And the Acer one's $299. And they've announced that this holiday season, uh, when this is available on retail shelves, they'll package their headset and the motion controllers together for $399. So we're trying to make our platform as accessible as possible to as many end users as possible. Uh, whether it's businesses who are going to take advantage of this or the, the uh, capabilities of HoloLens or consumers this holiday season with immersive headsets, um, we'll also be targeting a wider range of PCs than ever before with, uh, with VR devices. So we won't just be targeting gaming machines. We'll be able to target a broader range of PCs with these devices. So if you start thinking about developing for immersive headsets in Windows Mixed Reality, you're going to have a much larger, larger audience available to you than you've had before. And then everything that's a UWP, a universal Windows application today, uh, works on these devices, both HoloLens and um, uh, and these immersive headsets. So you can, make, you can make your existing, if you have a 2D Universal Windows platform application, you can make that work on HoloLens and these immersive headsets today. And so we have a large catalog of applications already available. They don't have to be specific to mixed reality to run on these devices. All right, so let's spend some time talking about HoloLens specifically. Still our flagship device, still our baby. Um, shipped 14 months ago to developers, um, our HoloLens development editions. Um, and we're really proud of what uh, businesses and developers have done with the product before. So I'm going to play a video for you that just, it's probably my favorite of all the videos we've ever released. Um, and it showcases some of the amazing work that's, uh, that's happening with businesses today. So businesses are directly developing for HoloLens. Um, our agency partners like Valorum, who you heard speaking before me, are doing amazing work with real end clients, transforming the way that they do business. You saw in that video um, applications across architecture, engineering, construction, design, manufacturing, automotive, education. Um, so we have, a, we have several key verticals where we make our investments in terms of marketing. Um, and it's, where it's basically in the spaces where we find that our partners are going to have the largest ROI, um, either to save time, money, uh, or to do things that were never possible before, to teach people, educate their employees in ways that were never possible before, design things, iterate in ways that weren't possible before. Um, so HoloLens, has a, as we define it, we kind of talk about the value props of HoloLens and why um, you would uh, develop for HoloLens. 
So holograms can be used to enhance the real world. You've probably seen a little bit of this where holograms can be placed in your environment as objects that you can walk around. Um, you can sort of have them be uh, what we would refer to internally as like dollhouse, where it's sort of scaled down and you've got almost like a god view um, of something and you have a different perspective on it. Um, you can also place holograms in the world, though, with real-world values of measurement. And because the device understands the space and understands real-world measurements, you can actually um, interact with, manipulate holograms or view holograms, walk around them um, when they're in real-life scale. So you can see something exactly as it would look. And we play around with this sometimes where um, we use holograms to iterate on something to design, and then we 3D print it or we prototype it. And you can actually hold the physical one up right next to the hologram that you're seeing in your HoloLens, and there's a one-for-one -one representation there. HoloLens is also going to enable new ways to connect, create, and explore. More natural way to interact. We'll spend time talking about our interaction modalities, but um, HoloLens is meant to reduce as many uh, to reduce the barriers between you and your technology and the way that you interact with um, digital assets in your world. And so we're really big on trying to not have you have to have things in your hands where possible, right? And use interaction modalities like uh, where your head is pointed to interact, your gestures, um, and your voice. And then all of this is possible because of advanced technology that we'll talk about that goes into the device. So one of the first things you'll want to understand about HoloLens as you think about getting started is that it's a completely untethered computer. It's a self-contained device. CPU, GPU, battery, Wi-Fi, display, audio, Bluetooth, all of it is built into the device. It is completely untethered, completely self-contained. You put it on, and it can work in any environment. Um, it's optimized for indoor use, but we have people that take it outside and do stuff with it, too. Um, but you can put it on, you can take it into any room. It's going to start understanding that room. You don't have to talk to another PC. It can be networked because it is a Windows device. It is a Windows PC. You can have it be networked, leverage the cloud, talk to other devices on a local network or across, um, uh, across borders. But it is ultimately a device that you put on your head, and it is ready to go, and everything that you need is self-contained in that device. We've got advanced sensors that we put in there for a couple of things. So we use cameras for inside-out tracking, the same ones that are leveraged on those immersive headsets that I was describing earlier, that lets us have an understanding of where you're looking. Um, it's done with almost no lag. People are, are always crazy impressed. Um, how many of you guys have demoed HoloLens, by the way? Awesome. Wow, that's really fantastic. So we only had a few hands go up for people that own HoloLens right now or are already developing against it. But I'm really glad to see that so many of you have gotten a chance to try it. Um, hopefully, you've experienced the magic of the, uh, the tracking plus the uh, depth sensors that we have that do environmental understanding and spatial mapping, start creating awareness of the environment as you walk around. Those things in tandem um, give you a pretty magical feel that the holograms really are holding their position. They're staying put just like real world objects would. As you get closer to them, they get larger just like real, what, real world objects would. Um, as you walk around them, they hold their position and you hopefully experience almost no lag as your head is turning around and you're looking from uh, one part of the room to the other. That's made possible by those cameras and the depth sensors that are in the device. We also leverage transparent lenses, as I'm sure you know if you've uh, tried the device. We don't occlude your vision. We make sure that you're always able to see the real world because the, uh, the real world context and scale of these holograms is critical in most cases to the experiences that you're developing. You'll always be safe in your environment. It also means, though, as you collaborate with others, you're able to look them in the eyes. You're able to talk to somebody face to face, which is something that you're not able to do when you wear immersive headsets. And it's why we're so excited about HoloLens and why um, we continue to put em emphasis and effort um, behind our holographic devices. It really changes the way you work with others. And then we have custom silicon that we develop, the HPU or the holographic processing unit. Um, this is what allows us to handle all of the data from the sensors without taking away your use of the, the CPU on the device. We try to make as much of the compute available to you and your application as possible by offloading as much of the sensor data to this custom silicon, this HPU. And then the hardware also includes speakers that sit over your ears that enable spatial sound. So holograms are made of light and sound. And when you put a hologram in your environment, it should look like it's really there. But to really feel real, it needs to sound like it's really there as well. 
And so when you attach a sound to a hologram that you place in your environment, or you're generating sound in the real world around you, whether from a physical surface or object, uh, or a digital surface or object, these speakers are going to enable you to hear these sounds as if they're in 360 degrees around you. You can pinpoint a sound on HoloLens without being able to see it. And so developers do really cool stuff with this where you can draw your attention, you can draw the user's attention to an area you want them to, uh, to be interacting with or look at just on sound alone by sort of pinging from a different area. You can hear the sound, and as you get closer to it, it gets louder, just like a real sound would in the real world. And as you walk farther away from it, it gets softer. As you turn your head, you can directionally understand where it's coming from. So that's enabled with the speakers that are in the device. So let's talk about developing for Windows Mixed Reality. I've reinforced this a lot, but it's, it's our key proposition. This is why we do Windows Mixed Reality. One platform that targets multiple device types. So when you build a Windows, uh, if you've already been developing for HoloLens today, you already are developing for Windows Mixed Reality. You already, in fact, understand a lot about developing for the immersive headsets as well. One platform, one set of tools. You can target, uh, you can see here when you publish, you can target dot holographic to target HoloLens and holographic headsets. You can target desktop and then detect um, when the application launches if there's an immersive headset plugged into the PC. And right now, Windows is the only one doing this, unified platform across these device types. If you want to learn more, by the way, and uh, I'll plug this a couple times, if you want to learn more and you want to understand uh, what development resources are available to, to you today and understand this platform and how to develop against it and the APIs that you'll leverage, um, this website down at the bottom that's a little small, sorry about that, aka.ms slash MR, all of our developer documentation is available there, tutorials, um, we'll walk you through the whole process. I manage that site, so if you go there and you don't, you, you're, you're missing something, you see something, uh, you see something missing that you need, a resource that you want, you can let me know, and I'll make sure that we get it up there. With one platform and one set of tools, you're able to leverage the, the tools that you're already using, um, in many cases, Visual Studio, Unity um, is our uh, premier middleware partner, if you're already developing in Unity, um, it's really easy to develop for HoloLens and develop for these immersive headsets as well, because Unity's announced support for the entire range of Windows Mixed Reality devices. If you have your own engine, you can develop directly against DirectX, and you can bring that to the table as well. Um, our partners, uh, Asobo in France, um, who does a lot of game development, they've built some experiences for HoloLens. They brought their own engine to the table. And then you'll use the Universal Dev Center as the ingestion tool for your applications. And then you can distribute easily through the store, you can monetize, and you can target our entire ecosystem of devices. And I mentioned Unity, but if there's other middleware partners, or if there's other middleware tools that you're using today to develop your experiences, let us know that as well. We're constantly investigating um, who we work with in terms of middleware. And so if there's somebody that's super important to you, let us know, and we'll, be, we'll spend time exploring that. So let's talk about the core building blocks of uh, mixed reality experiences, specific to HoloLens in this case. Gaze, gesture, voice, and then spatial mapping, spatial sound, and world coordinates. So gaze is your first method of interaction. Where your head is pointed, a cursor moves with you. This is true of both HoloLens and the immersive headsets. You point your head at what you want to interact with, a cursor moves with it. And that's going to tell your application what your user intends to take action on. HoloLens has cameras that, uh, that track your hands and are able to get input about, are able to um, uh, get data about what your hands are doing. Gesture is one of the primary ways of interacting once you've looked at something and we know that you want to interact with it. So in terms of gestures, there are a few gestures that we spend a ton of time, money, research, um, proving out that people could do consistently um, when they interact with the device. And so what we ended up with is an air tap for select. So that's a down and up motion, almost like you're clicking on a mouse. That's how you'll select to interact with the hologram. You can also do a tap and hold. And then you can do a tap and hold and you can kind of track against it in a three-dimensional way. So you could be drawing or placing things. Um, you can also tap and hold 
um, is as a way to drag um, or scroll through resources, like think about a website. And then there's also Bloom, which is a way to exit applications or get back to home. So the way on your Windows laptop today, you would hit maybe the Windows button on your keyboard or hit the Start button uh, in the bottom left of your display. You'll use the Bloom gesture to go home or exit your application. And again, those gestures are ones that we spent a ton of time testing uh, to make sure that users could do them consistently. And by the way, before I move off of that, um, as you think about it, the immersive headsets, I talked about our motion controllers. So we have a way for you to track, uh, or a way for you to get data from those as well when you're doing uh, immersive headset development in Windows Mixed Reality. Um, so since the devices don't have hand tracking and you wouldn't be able to see your hands anyway, we leverage the motion controllers for, uh, for a similar effect. And then voice works across both device types as well. HoloLens has uh, microphones built in so it can detect your voice. And you can use voice commands to query Cortana and ask questions of her. Um, to interact with the device in the operating system, or you can use voice um, to uh, take action on the holograms inside of your application. What's really cool is when you develop for this, because um, we have such a, a robust speech platform, you actually don't have to teach your application how to recognize certain words. You're able to just write them, and the device will understand what term to expect. So you're able to just put something in like, um, like grab, for instance. And by just typing that out, the device understands what that should sound like and will recognize that, uh, uh, that voice command from the user. And again, that's true of both our immersive headsets and HoloLens. Spatial mapping is unique to HoloLens. This is one of the things that sets it apart and keeps it our flagship mixed reality device. These devices, our HoloLens, as I mentioned, has depth sensors that are mapping your environment. As you walk around, when you put the device on and you start looking around, it starts pulling in information from the environment. It starts scanning the walls. It's scanning the floors as you're looking. It scans the ceilings. It starts building a three-dimensional mesh of the, um, excuse me, of the environment in which you're in. And as you walk around and you explore more of an area, it pulls more data in and builds more of a map. And in fact, it can remember where these maps are relative to the different places that you've gone um, by, uh, by considering certain things like the Wi-Fi network that you saw in those places. And so you can place holograms around your environment. We do this all the time in, at work, right, all across our floor. But then we take it home, and different holograms are placed inside of our home in the different rooms of our home. And HoloLens remembers those layouts. And when you re-enter that space, it's able to do a quick check against the Wi-Fi network and the map that it detects as it starts scanning and say, yep, this lines up with what I know about this place, and it puts all the holograms right where they should go. Spatial mapping also works to, uh, for, for occlusion. So as I'm scanning something like this, and, and again, you're not actively scanning, right? You're not telling it to scan. You're just walking around something. As you walk around, it's learning more about your environment. If I were to walk around this podium, um, it's going to understand that this podium has sides, top and sides. If I were to look under a table, it starts to under the, understand that the table has space underneath it. If I look around a corner of a wall, it understands that there's space around that corner, and that's going to allow you to occlude holograms as well in a very realistic way so that the holograms feel like they're really in that environment. Spatial sound I already spent some time talking about before, so I won't spend a ton more time on it. But the ability, again, to place sounds with these holograms or place sounds in your world and have them sound like they're really there. The platform handles this for you. And then world coordinates. So for HoloLens, as you walk around, um, HoloLens is a world scale device. You can keep walking infinitely while wearing a HoloLens because it's an untethered device and you can keep exploring a space. As you do that, we need a very robust way to keep track of where holograms are supposed to be. Now, if you control the space like you do in a, in a virtual environment, like a game or a, a VR application, um, you could control your own world coordinates. You could have some absolute world coordinates. In this case, though, our platform leverages spatial anchors so that as the device is learning more about your environment and how close things are to each other, it can sort of dynamically adjust and reassess those things. So here's what you'll bring to the table as you build an app. The holograms, the assets, right? Models, scripts, textures, shaders. We make an open source hollow toolkit available to help out with this. And so these are assets that we bring to the table that you can leverage. That is available um, on our repo on GitHub. And then our Windows Mixed Reality platform brings the input modalities 
and spatial anchors, spatial mapping, and spatial sound to the table. You can build 2D applications that you can put up on the wall. Like I said, flat, universal Windows platform applications. Or, obviously, the cooler thing to do is build mixed reality applications that blend the physical and the digital. If you don't have a HoloLens yet, you can start testing an application with the HoloLens emulator that we make available to you for free. And you're going to have the ability to extend your reach because HoloLens is available in multiple markets. So you can localize, you can distribute through the Windows Store, you can publish to the Windows Store for business, which is private for a commercial enterprise, um, or you can publish uh, publicly to the Windows Store and make money um, to all, for all HoloLens users. Similarly, for these immersive headsets, right? again, you can publish an application that runs on both device types and take advantage of that larger install base. This will be the most important slide you look at today, which is going to tell you about resources. So take a picture of this, please, if you have any interest in following up and learning more. aka.ms slash MR, that's all of the online documentation and resources we make available to you for free to teach you how to develop for HoloLens. Forums.hololens.com is where you can talk to our Windows Mixed Reality engineers. We don't use an agency to staff that. Our forums are actually staffed by our engineers. We'll answer questions there. And then you can work with awesome agencies like Valorum, who you heard from before me, if you're not interested in doing the development yourself, um, but you want to hire somebody for your business. And then finally, you can get these devices today. You can pre-order the immersive headsets um, from the Microsoft Store starting at $299. Or you can order a HoloLens Development Edition today for $3,000 for the uh, Development Edition or $5,000 for the commercial suite that has enterprise features, and that will ship to you immediately. So with that, I want to say thank you. Um, I appreciate your time. I guess that I went literally 30 minutes, so I probably don't have time to answer questions. But if you want to tweet at me, um, my, uh, my Twitter handle is at Matt Zeller. No dots or anything in the middle, no spaces, no underscores, just at Matt Zeller. And you can tweet at me and I'll answer questions or point you in the right direction. Um, or consider jumping in those forums that I told you about where you can talk to our engineers and get questions answered directly. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you guys.